Hey guys, so this is my Adler 189A. It's a uh, West German made uh, domestic uh, sewing machine from probably the early 50s, mid 50s. Uh, Adler stopped making uh, industry, or I'm sorry, uh, domestic sewing machines, I think in the late 50s, or early 60s possibly. Um, they just couldn't compete in the marketplace with a lot of the um, imports that were coming in. Uh, from Japan that were like really undercutting them in, in price but uh, they continue to make industrials and they still make them today under Der Kopp Adler there was a merger there and and those are the finest without a doubt the the best machines that you can buy on the market today so uh, in terms of the vintage industrials my preference is for the Fafs uh, over the Adlers although the Adlers are really nice and I mean this is the reason why I like the Fafs over the Adlers is really for nitpicky, silly reasons. In terms of functionality, they're, they're comparable and they're both the best that you can buy from, from that era. But uh, when it comes to the domestics, I have uh, quite a few Fafs, um, Singers, Neckies, a um, few others, Wheeler and Wilson, whatever. I, I have quite a few industri or, uh, domestic uh, vintage machines and this Adler is uh, definitely the smoothest, the fastest, um, the nicest, the most well finished, most well thought out machine that I have um, and that I've run across. And there is no information out there. I mean, when I got this machine, I had so much trouble just getting anything on it. Um, and even the listing, I purchased it locally on Craigslist. The listing was was bare. It, there wasn't a photo. It just said Adler sewing machine, and I knew from my experience with the industrials that Adlers were really, really high quality machines. So I just went out and bought it, um, sight unseen, um, just knowing that it was an Adler, and then I was really happily surprised to see that it was in this good a condition, and it actually had came with um, came with a bunch of accessories, came with all the accessories, it came with a tin full of feet, um, and then also it's a cam machine, so it also came with with cams but I thought I'd do just a quick kind of sewing demonstration to show you what the machine is capable of see how well it stitches um, kind of how the cams operate and then some of the over maybe just some overview things that kind of differentiate it but if you happen to run across one of these <clears throat> I highly recommend you you get it regardless of condition I mean as long as it's functioning go for it because you're not going to find a, a better um, cam run machine uh, I really like the Neki BU uh, uh, Mira. I actually prefer the BU Nova, but I like the Mira because it had it has the cam mechanism. But this is so much more elegant. Uh, this machine is just phenomenal. So um, it's a straight zigzag and cam stitch machine. So the the controls for the zigzag width are here. It's just a dial. You just turn back and forth. Really, really smooth. Everything is nicely plated. Um, zero to five. Now I don't know if this corresponds to actual millimeter widths or if it's just a zero to five scale. I actually haven't measured it. Maybe I will at some point, but it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, it does have stops for the stitch width so you can um, use this for doing buttonholes. Uh, and then it has um, needle positioning lever here, left, center, and right. And you can kind of hover in between positions uh, if you need to for whatever reason. Um, so that's nice. And then this is the stitch width forward and reverse. And then it has a micro dial here that uh, basically acts as your uh, your stop to match up your forward and reverse stitch lengths. But it also lets you dial in and it's numbered. The cam mechanism is here. So uh, it's a two-step cam. So let me grab one of these. I have one of them out. So this is one of the only all-metal cams you'll see. I, I have never seen another machine with that's like the cams are this robust they're labeled you can see this one's 3a the manual kind of outlines what each of the cams do and and what setting to put it on to get it to to get a desired decorative stitch um, but there's two two steps to it now and you turn it on and off by turning these knobs here um, and then I'll show you on the front this one controls the stitch position the needle position, so left, center, and right. So they'll show you on a uh, on the diagram. Um, you know, if you want to do like a staggered stitch, 
like a three-step zigzag type thing, which this machine can do, uh, you would run that. This one then also controls your stitch, your stitch width. So you can run the cam only, a, only doing the stitch width or only doing the stitch position, or you can run it doing stitch, stitch position and stitch width. So each, each cam offers basically three different um, types of stitches. And then there, I have all four cams. I, I believe there are four, there, there could be five. I think you can buy more at the time, but you know, I, I don't use these anyway, but, but they're there. And then it also has um, the ability to raise and lower the feed dogs via a lever here, which is nice. So it does have an integrated light, and the light comes directly above the machine on the nose. The uh, front actually doesn't have a removable nose plate. It pivots and tilts back, and this is where you access your pressure, uh, presser foot pressure, and you can um, oil all the parts as necessary. The switch for the, for the light is on the back of the machine. It's a toggle switch, and then it has an automatic bobbin winder on here. Um, it has a belt protector covering it, and then just the exposed wheel here, uh, which I like because when I just want to hit the brakes on the machine, I can just throw my hand there and and, and uh, stop the stop the machine from going. And the automatic bobbin winders on the underside. Uh, it uses the same plug system as a Necky or a Foff. So if you want to, if you need a replacement plug, you can just buy um, one of those. Those are more commonly advertised, uh, the Foffs and the um, and the Necky plugs. So if if you're searching on eBay for Adler plug, you're not going to find anything. You but you will find uh, a bunch on the Faf 130. So the plug works. Also the bobbin on the underside of the machine. It's a it's a, a vertical rotary hook. So this is very very fast, very very smooth machine. Very similar to the Faf 130 in in the hook orientation and operation. It has a nylon cleated belt similar to the FOF 130, driving a shaft, a geared mechanism here, so you have one a gear here and a gear here. Uh, so it's very smooth, very fast. Um, and then yeah, let me just jump into sewing on it. Oh, so the bobbin and the bobbin case. I purchased a set of bobbins from some online retailer. They were advertising them for the FA, uh, the Adler 189A as well as compatibility with the Singer 9W, which I also have, and Singer 20U. But they said explicitly 189A. Well, I ordered these bobbins just because I like having extras. These are actually smaller in diameter than the bobbins that originally came with the machine. Um, and they're smaller than the FAF 130 bobbins. Now, they work in the... Uh, they work in my, oh, I'm sorry, not my Singer 9W, my Singer 115. So they work in the Singer 115 and the 20U, but they're too small for the bobbin case for this Adler. They fall out. So the bobbins that you want on this machine are the Foff 130 bobbins. Those fit. Um, also, if you're missing the bobbin case out of this machine, don't despair because the Foff 130 bobbin case fits in this machine. I've tested it uh, with a couple different 130 cases functions identically as a wood, functions exactly the same as a wood with the, the stock bobbin case. So you can see this was done with the Foff 130 bobbin case, uh, exactly the same. So if you don't have the bobbin case, that's okay. You can you can either get a vintage Foff 130, I prefer vintage when I, when I can get it, or get you know one of these reproductions. I'm sure it'll work as well. So let me just jump into a stitching with it and you can see how the thing runs. I'm going to keep the light off on the machine so hopefully it doesn't blow out the image. And hopefully you can see well enough. But uh, anyway, so so here it is. We'll start with the straight stitch. Or this is a zigzag, but we'll go to straight. You can see how smooth it is. It's, it feeds really well, very fast. This is four layers of cotton. You can go over to a zigzag, shorten the stitch length. See, it's very fast. I mean, this is the fastest machine the mo that I've that I've had. The, the motor is the same as most of the other motors 
um, that were being, or most of the other machines that were being imported were being outfitted with motors made domestically because of the 115 vo uh, voltage. So a lot of them are the same motors. This one's a made in the USA motor, badged as an Adler, but it's got 5,000 RPM um, and it's a 1.1 1 .1 amp. It's a 1.3 amp uh, motor, but it's 5,000 RPM. But it's, it feels much faster than even like my FAF 130, which is an already fast machine. And I think it just has to do with the gearing. The pulley size on the motor is the same, but I think that they use a slightly smaller um, hand wheel on here because the, the speed on this is just, it's really fast. Um, the thread that I'm using in the machine right now is a uh, Guterman... Um, uh, Tex 40, so it's a thicker thread with a bigger needle. I think this might even be a 16 needle. So that's why, um, and the tension is pretty high, so that's why some of these stitches don't look so great because this is very thin material. Typically, it, you'd use this thread on thicker material. So let's operate the um, cam. I don't even know what cam is in here right now, but. So let's turn on the cam here. Cam C. Oh, I didn't have the cam seated, that's why I wasn't operating. So you gotta put it in, rotate it around until it locks into place. And then you can go ahead and turn it. Actually, let me get a different piece of scrap so you can really see what's going on. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see that the here it's it's varying, right? So you can change it so it's just one of them. So this is a three-step zigzag. See, it's, it's going pretty wide. I think. Um, Increase that stitch length, you can really see this is more like a wave, um, and then you can shorten it back down. There you go, so it's a three step zigzag. It's really this the machine, really is, is phenomenal. And then you can turn that aspect of the cam off, turn this other one on, which is the stitch width. And you can see, so it does like this thing, and you can change the needle position to, to, the, uh, to the middle, and then it'll change the shape of that stitch as well. And then you can go to the left, and it will change also. So you can see the, the different, you know, three stage here, really long stitch length, three stage, short stitch length, three stage. You can see this wave pattern here um, with the needle position in the left, it waves out from the left and then it goes to the center when you change the needle position. So so yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal machine, phenomenally fast. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have an opportunity to get one, get it because you, you'll definitely be happy with it. The only thing, my only gripe with the machine as a whole is that I don't like the feed dogs on it. Um, here are the feed dogs on a like FAF 130. These are the stock feed dogs. Now I found that the FAF 130 doesn't feed material very well. Uh, and that's because it uses these diamond um, feed dogs. These are not effective. They're, they're soft and easy on fabric but they're, they're not aggressive enough to pull a lot of material through. So if you look at something like on a Singer, they have teeth, basically the angle back, that are, that are really grabby. Yes, they can mar really delicate material, but um, they're more effective. 
So you can actually buy upgraded feed dogs with the FAF 130. This Adler uses the same feed dogs, which is this diamond grid. They're, they're not very, they just they don't stick well. So it not only does it use the same patterning, but they use, the, the, the feed dogs are pretty narrow. So they're actually maybe 80% of the width of, of these on the FAF 130. So they're narrower and they use a le less grip material, less, uh, you know, grabby pattern. So you can see if I put a little bit of tension, let me uh, turn off the uh, cam. If I put a little bit of tension on the um, material, it doesn't want to feed. Now you can play with the feed dog pressure and bump it up, or the pressure foot pressure and bump it up but it just doesn't want to feed as uh, uh, as well as you know other machines like so that that's my my only gripe with the machine is that is that it doesn't um, feed as well as I'd like you know and I'm also coming from industrial machines too so you understand those machines will pull anything through and even walking foots will yank, yank them out of your hand so that that's kind of where I'm coming from. For for the average user, if you're making clothes, uh, you know, just average sewing tasks, this thing will feed fine and will and will do well for you. But that's my only my only only complaint about that of this machine is is that it's the feed dogs aren't as aggressive as I would like. But that's by design. This is a domestic machine, and it's not designed to sew multiple layers of canvas and heavy duty materials and feed a lot of material through it's not it's, it's not its purpose it wasn't wasn't made for that so i can't really fault it for it but but that's just one thing that that i wish it had was more aggressive feed dogs i was able to upgrade them on my um fof 130 to the industrial set that goes on the fof 138 so that remedied the issue on the fof 130 uh so that that's the only thing other than that, it's a phenomenal machine. So if you have an opportunity to get one, snag it up. Um, it's, in my opinion, this is the best machine that I have. I, I will never get rid of this one just because I consider it to be the top, top domestic machine that I have. So there it is. It's the Adler 189A. All right. Thanks, guys.